Uh, Larry, we were just talking about you know how long you tell me how long you've been in Pendleton, how many birthdays you've been here. What do you tell me? Uh, I've been incarcerated about five years, and I've been had about since I was. Four, I had my 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th birthday in here, and I only been out of here twice. I've been to this facility three times, and North Central twice, and done multiple things in these facilities. But it's kind of rough in here. They're just talking right now. They didn't Hang out for a little bit. Tell me. Hey, it's going to be a couple minutes, all right? Truthfully, I was going to flip the table, but then I was like, I thought on top of my head I got a daughter and I got a girl out there that loves me, so I was like, nah, I'm cool. I just had to keep it cool. I just pulled all my information I gathered through my groups in here and education and brought it all together in the middle of my head and just put it all in one and decided just to be cool do what I had to do. But there was a time when you couldn't hold your temper. Tell me about the times that you kind of acted out here in the units. What did you do? Uh, I started riots, flipped stuff, battered staff, battered students, and caught a lot of trouble just for no reason. So what goes through your head when you, you know, just Losing your mind or are, you, are you thinking at all? Tell me, kind of take me back to that. What made you do that? Nothing really. It's just we went on lockdown because some stuff happened in our unit, and they was trying to punish all of us for the little bit of things that happened. So everybody in room one and two just blacked out and it just went off from there. I mean, we didn't know what happened until three o'clock in the morning stuff like that. We basically don't know what happens whenever it goes through our head. We just basically back, black out and just get the batter on people. We just don't think that's, that's a problem. So then like, when do you kind of snap back to it? Whenever it's all done and over with. Whenever, whenever you're in a different place, basically. Like when, when the thing happened in E14, that ride, uh, they took me to North Central. I was in Saget. 3.45 in the morning, and the riot started at 8 o'clock and didn't end until 2 o'clock, and they took me to North Central Juvenile and uh, put me in SAG. I sat in there until 3.45 in the morning, and that's when I finally realized what happened. So, do you kind of understand where the officers are coming from and what the art committee, you know, when they decide to revoke your release, do you, you know, understand why they do that, or? At the time, no, but whenever I get to think about it, it kind of gets simpler to figure out. Yeah. So when do you think you're going to get out now? What's, how do you feel now about when you're going to finally be released? I think that, because a couple times they just mess with people's heads just to see what they'll do and just to see if where they're at in their anger cycle. And they'll just tell them they're denied and two weeks later come and get them and release them. But, in my case, I think they ain't playing with me, so I'm, I'm just saying they probably, 24th, I'll probably go back and I'll probably get out August 6th, so. So what are you gonna do when you get out? Get a job and move out of state. Take care of my baby and my girl. That's all I got to do. I ain't got nothing else out there for me. What about your parents? Where are they? What's the deal with your parents? Tell me about your parents. My parents live in Oklahoma. Because uh, when I, I was, when I got incarcerated, I did that riot thing with the North Center. They stayed for a little bit, but then they was like, I caused them too much stress, they can't handle it, so they kind of scooted off. All my family did. All I got is my aunt and my girl and my daughter. So, uh, That's it. Yeah. You plan on seeing your parents? I don't plan on going to see them, no. They, I mean, they can't stay up here until I get out. I mean, why, why should I go see them? They don't write me. They don't do send me nothing, cards, anything. So why would I go visit them? Mm. It's just like they forgot about Basically, until I call them on the phone. Basically, then I'll act like they ain't never left. Mm. So where, where do you think your kind of anger started? Do you even know? Through my dad. My dad's in uh, Miami Correctional Facility. I got I got a stepdad that's with my mom right now in Oklahoma. And uh, I think it's you know, my dad, what he did to my sisters and my family over the years. I think that's basically where my anger came from.
but I know if I probably talked to him about when visit him when I got out and talked to him about it, I probably could settle some of the things that happened. So. Do you want to do that? I've been thinking about it. I've been writing him since I've been in here. I've been talking to him about going up there when I get out. So you think that might be one of your plans once you get out? Probably. If we can get it together. So what do you want for yourself when you get out of here? Truthfully, I just want to live life and die. Truthfully. Be with my family until it's my time. And that's all I live for, my family. Other than that, everything else could just go down the drain. They're just keeping you down here to keep you out of trouble? I know Corey Green over at 24 is in the same boat, so. Greenlee's working on some programs where you guys are going to get a chance to get out a little bit more and stuff. So, give you a chance to get those rolling. Should be here in a couple weeks. When are you looking at leaving? 25 days. 25 days? See, you, you'll actually be going out right when things get started up, so every, everything will be cool. Just keep staying out of trouble. Because I, I haven't heard your name for a while, so. But has it gotten better since Greenlee came down here? I don't know. I just came down here like yesterday. Yesterday? Oh, okay. So it's still not as new. At least you're not in room seven. So we had the net. We had the nastiest offender in room seven ever when we first opened this place up. When we when we left, you know that, that wall, this toy control in that room. That whole wall, from top to bottom, was covered with boogers, semen, spit. We went in there. We cleaned that room for four days straight. We were wearing all that biohazard stuff. This kid was nasty. So, who's in room seven? Hey, me, I didn't do that. I know you didn't do it. <laughs> 25 days? Stay straight for 25 days and you'll be good. You done with DOC? You done with DOC? Just uh, keep staying out of trouble, stay off everybody's radar screen. Everything will be cool. All right, Cole, we'll stay out of trouble, man. Warden, I can't see through your stuff either. What's up? Hey, uh, I made my level three. I'm about to get my level four in two weeks. You finally decided you had enough of DLC? Yeah. I'm hip. You've been down here for a grip. I think you're the, uh, you and Ulysses are the veteran staff or veteran offenders down here, aren't you? No, I've been down here 18 months. I've been down here like 20. That is a long ass time to be down here playing around. Yeah, I'm about to go home though. Uh, I get off that dumb, dumb stuff. Yeah, what level are you on? Two weeks. You know about you know about this program at Green starting up, right? Nah. He's gonna get like an honor program going down here where some of you guys they're gonna try to start working you guys out a little more before you go out to GP to get y'all ready. Yeah. So like the the marching and uh, some other stuff. He's already talked to me about getting uh getting a TV down here. I got one of those big projector TVs we could throw it up on the wall. So there'll be some good stuff happening for you guys as long as you guys keep being straight. All right. Warren, stay out of trouble, man. All right, thanks. Yep. What's up, Spout? They uh they thought I was doing a good enough job that they gave me a promotion to move me up front. So I'm working I'm working in I'm working in the uh in the training department as a training coordinator. Hey, you know my mail up there, they you know uh, Miss Sergeant Redfield? Uh-huh. See like the player my mail rip it up and shit. Yeah, what? They, they better not be ripping up your mail. I swear to God, ask, uh, look, you can ask everybody over here. She like, she's be setting people up and stuff. I'm on full restriction right now because uh, she started digging her nails in my arm and they was taking me from the showers. I was in shackles and handcuffs. And, uh, slam on the bed. I ain't gonna lie, man. I did spit in her face, though, man. We're trying to play, bitch. We're trying to act Why, was it before or after all that? It was, it was, it was, no, it was after that. After, after the fact that she done it. That's that's never the answer. Trying to get uh, trying to win a battle like that with staff, but there's a right way to go about it. Give me a chance to uh, look at some of that and see what's going on with it. Because you know, temporal mail, 
That's a, that's a federal offense. I can't do that. Not unless it's stuff that you're not allowed to have. No, she really do. Look, I have pictures that came in like like a couple weeks back. And uh, she started, she was hot. They said that Anderson walked in there and he was cleaning up the control room. They said they found all my pictures, most of my pictures and shit. Another step that you're facing today. So what's what's coming up now? I'm doing the GQE, trying to you know get my education higher, trying to get it so I can go to the actual military. But I struggle with the GD a lot because I don't understand a lot of the work because I was never taught. I, was, I skipped a lot of grades because I was homeschooled a lot. So I skipped school myself. So I didn't want to go. So. So you're getting ready now though for your re-entry hearing. Is that right? Tell right. me. Tell me about that. Um. Basically, I'm in, a GD, I'm in a GD class to study my GED, and then it's like a preparation class that helps you preparate for the GED, so that when you go in there, you don't fail it. But most kids, they pass it, but a lot of kids don't. And they go back and they keep taking it, and they keep taking it. And then the scores get higher and higher, and they get more approved. So, you know, it's really, really good teachers, really good staff here, and especially Cooley. You, know, you like Cooley, don't I like I like Cooley a lot. He he he's been Cooley's been a motivator for me for a long time. I've known him since I got here. Um, he stuck he stuck through me through thick and thin, and you know he teaches me a lot, and I teach him stuff, and he teaches me the way of life that I the way of life that I don't see. You know I I see things a lot the way I want to see it, not the way other people see it, and then he shows me those ways. And when I see those ways, I think, oh wow, there's a new door to life, you know. It's really, really cool. It's really. You know. So, it, in a way, is it sad at all to be leaving him? It is. I mean, I'm I'm gonna try to get to know him more on the out when I get out of here. Just, like keep in touch with him, you know. See what's going on with him, and he's gonna find out what's going on with me. And I'm gonna try to, you know, do some stuff with him when I get out, you know, because he's been a real. He's been there for me for a long time. You know, I'm not gonna let that go. You know, so keep on pushing me even farther in life. Even though I'm an adult, you know, it's still fun to have a friend that's an adult. You know, that's, you know, a higher step in ranking me. You know, he's an officer and I'm an offender. You know, it's kind of really, you're not supposed to, you know, get to know those staff, the staff, but this guy I've, I've gotten to know just because I've been around him for so long. It's just really neat. So even though he, he can be tough, you guys kind of know deep down he cares, don't oh, you? Oh yes, we know he know he cares because he comes in on his off time. When he's not even supposed to be here, he'll come in and off, on, Cooley will come in on his off time and be there for us. He, when, he, when he came in to do that interview for you guys, he wasn't even supposed to be here that day. He was supposed to be at home with his wife in this nice big house that he has. And he is a nice house, I, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> So now you're getting ready for an interview with um, the Navy. Yeah, the interview with the Navy. I, I did. I took my ASVAB. I mean, I struggled a little bit with the ASVAB. Didn't do too well with it. But I'm gonna keep pushing on and study harder, harder, you know. But then right now you're going into this room over here for a re-entry hearing. Is that right? No. No. The, oh, okay. I think it was by somebody else. Oh, okay. Okay. We're talking about like transition. Yeah. Tran transition phase is like when your placement comes back and then they take you into the room, figure out why you entered the facility, you know, what have you done to change, what groups you've done, and then they decide whether you're ready to move on to the next phase, which is release. And then you go to release arc, and then you got to do the same thing, just a little bit harder. And then like a week later, 13 days later, after your release transition, you get released and go home after, so it's 13 days after release, so it's pretty good. So one more day in this place and you're out. Well, it's, I gotta wait for my placement people to come back because they're going to Florida to help uh, deliver a baby in Florida, so I gotta wait an extra couple more weeks for them to get back and then I leave on April 1st. So I'll be here for the next time y'all come back, but then I'm gone, so. So who are you gonna go live with? I'm going to live with my family down in Florida. Right now we live here, we're trying to sell our house and move down to uh, Florida. But we're struggling selling a really big house that we have because it's so old and it's renewed that we're trying to sell it. 
it's just it's a difficult time. It's really difficult. So we're trying to sell that, and then once we sell it, my family moves down there to Florida with my dad. He's down there trying to get another house, big up, started, and stuff like that. So. Okay. Well, thanks. I'll let you go. Whatever they're gonna do with you next. All right. Okay. All right. Okay.